Iraq, March the 20th, 2003. The creation of illusions and the selling of war had come a long way since Edward Bernays. The selling of this invasion depended on the news media to promote a series of illusions, like the link between Saddam Hussein and 9-11. The vision of the World War I poster of the Statue of Liberty in a shambles in New York Harbor is not that different from the image of the World Trade Center, a burning symbol that sort of entered into the stock footage of people's dreams. So immediately you have these associations between the image of the World Trade Center and Saddam Hussein and Iraq. But Saddam Hussein had absolutely nothing to do with it. Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with it, but that didn't matter. Because when you start using symbols that have been separated from their meaning and have sort of taken on a life of their own, the facts don't matter anymore. This is the Pentagon, which spends almost a billion dollars a year just on advertising, recruiting, propaganda, the selling of war. There are Pentagon contracts with news organizations in terms of how to manipulate the news. There are Pentagon officials involved in press releases that go to the, the media in which intelligence is used to manipulate public opinion, which is a violation of the charter of any intelligence uh, organization. Then you have retired generals who serve as press mm -hmm. spokesmen for all the networks, and they're, it's never revealed which military industrial firms uh, they work for. Central to this is the co-opting and spinning of a media regarded as the freest in the world. Showdown Iraq. If America goes to war, turn to MSNBC and the experts. If we journalists, including myself, had right from the get-go, from the opening pop, had started asking the kind of tough, digging, aggressive questions we should have been asking, and doing our reporting, rather than just being kind of stenographers, go to a briefing, have an official say something, print it in the paper next day. If we had done our job, I do think a strong argument can be made that perhaps we would not have gone to war. The attack on Iraq was sold by these two men. The blueprint for the invasion was this military doctrine called shock and awe, designed to paralyze the country and destroy food production, water supply and other civilian infrastructure the effect will be similar to the dropping of the atomic bombs on Japan. This was terrorizing people on a grand scale, and it would be covered up by deception in massive amounts. But this was not how it was reported at the time. Scores of American reporters have now joined U.S. military units in Kuwait as part of the Pentagon's effort to make any war with Iraq what the Pentagon calls a media-friendly campaign. A new word, embedding, entered media language in the planning for the invasion. Most of the reports that viewers saw came from within a system in which media organizations agreed to certain conditions laid down by the Ministry of Defense in London and the Pentagon in Washington. At the time that uh, our forces crossed uh, into Iraq, we had some 700 reporters embedded throughout our military formations. Embedding was important for that conflict for a number of reasons. Um, one being that we knew we were going up against an enemy that was uh, somewhat masterful at misinformation, disinformation. We have a number of correspondents embed with our troops across the region. And very deeply embedded in a personal way with the Marines that he's traveling with. I love this expression for the Iraq war, the embedded journalists. Well, too many journalists have been in bed with uh, the administration on a variety of issues. I would say 80 to 90 percent of what you read in the newspaper is officially inspired. If they're covering the intelligence community, for example, and they become critical of the CIA or a major intelligence organization, they're going to lose their sources. If they become critical of the Pentagon, it's going to be very difficult to get into the Pentagon uh, to deal with official military sources. 
So I think journalists like to be part of the game, part of the inside crowd, and therefore the conventional wisdom uh, is the best wisdom. Twenty-four hour news in particular is a system that is the most easy to manipulate. Twenty-four hour news is a giant echo chamber. So that's why, for example, Basra was reported as having fallen 17 times before it actually fell. And yet, within 24 hour news, when you're reporting it for the seventh time in that chain of 17 times when the city has fallen falsely, the fact that it's been wrong the previous seven times just doesn't matter. American armor is moving at will across whole swathes of Baghdad. This is, just... this is Ragi Omar reporting for the BBC from Baghdad. He describes the arrival of the Americans as a liberation. People have come out welcoming them, holding up V signs. This is an image taking place across the whole of the Iraqi capital today. But it was not happening across the rest of Iraq. This was another illusion. The toppling of the statue of Saddam Hussein was seized upon by the invading force as a target of opportunity. What was not news was a US Army investigation describing how they exploited what they called a media circus. There are almost as many reporters as Iraqis, says the report. It was an American PSYOPs officer who ordered the statue brought down. The resulting TV pictures gave no sense of the bloody conquest of Iraq that was already well underway. You know, I didn't really do my job properly. I think I'd hold my hand up and say that one didn't press the most uncomfortable buttons hard enough. As you described the arrival of the Americans, you didn't tell us the story of how that whole statue was itself manipulated. Mm. Why, why not? The entire live cameras of the world press were on the balcony of the Palestine Hotel. And that was really the only events that they saw about Iraqis coming out. So it was a sort of made-for-TV moment. And uh, the most telling moment in that whole day was when an American soldier climbed up a crane and put the American flag over the statue's face. Because in fact that was a true iconic moment of what had happened. That America had taken ownership of Iran. In Britain, Blair and Bush's invasion was applauded as a vindication of them and their strategy. He said that they would be able to take Baghdad without a bloodbath and that in the end the Iraqis would be celebrating and on both of those points he has been proved conclusively right and it would be entirely ungracious uh, even for his critics not to acknowledge that tonight he stands as a larger man and a stronger Prime Minister as a result. It is absolutely, without a doubt, a vindication of the strategy. It was a vindication for him. Those who said... 